Well, we first brought you the series Stopping Domestic Violence earlier this year. There was one story in that series that we wanted to tell you, but we couldn't until now. Yeah, that's right. Three women say they were abused by their former boyfriend, Kevin Evans, from St. John's. Now, he admitted his guilt in two of those cases and is preparing to head to trial Ontario for the third one in which he has pleaded not guilty. Now, that third woman's identity was covered by a publication ban, but she wanted to tell her story so CBC went to court to get the ban lifted so she could do just that. Now Evans fought against it, but a judge did side with the CBC, so now we can actually tell you the story of three women who say they unknowingly lived similar horror stories. And uh, first, a warning to our viewers. This story contains graphic descriptions of intimate partner violence. The details will be upsetting for some of you and are not suitable for all viewers. Here now's Arianna Kelland has this special report. Hurts to swallow. I just left the hospital, told him I had sore throat. That first week, I had been choked I don't know how many times, hit how many times. So it takes 20 charges and three women to keep a guy in prison before the trial, which is just mind numbing. He killed the woman I was before I met him. He broke the girl I was when I was with him. Jessica Donald likes putting pen to paper, detailing emotions she felt in the midst of what she says was an abusive relationship that began three years ago. But I put myself back together stronger than before. Donald took pictures too during her relationship with Kevin Evans. Bruised eyes, a swollen nose, patches of missing hair. I took pictures of the bruises after because I was like, this happened and he's going to try to convince me it wasn't that bad and he's going to try to convince me it didn't happen. And I never thought of it as evidence. I never thought of it as anything I would ever even show anybody. I wanted it for me. But these photos could be shown during Evan's upcoming trial for physically and sexually abusing Donald in 2017 and 18. There are a dozen charges in all. Donald was the first of three women to report him to police, but will be the last of them to go through the court system. It all started in 2017. Donald and Evans connected on the dating app Bumble while he was living in Donald's home province of Ontario. I'm thinking, like, wow, this guy is so open and honest. Like, it blows my mind now because he is the most dishonest person I've ever met in my life dishonest and that's not all according to Donald. She says she soon faced constant jealousy. Accusations of infidelity flew fast and allegedly so did his hands. Donald estimates she was choked around 20 to 30 times. Like he has blue eyes and they went black and it's just I don't know who this person is and they're choking me and they do it and then he stops and I get a breath, and then he does it again, and again, and again, and again. With every choking came a promise to change, she says, but those promises were never kept. Donald says if she didn't obey him, she paid the price. There were trips to the hospital, but Donald says she never disclosed how she got hurt. I had to believe that he wasn't a monster because I'm not the type of person that would date a monster. All this at the same time that Evans was seeing another woman, Lindsay Plank. Looks like a happy couple and then it isn't. Yeah, and that's why I have a big sweater on. It was also to try and hide as much as I could. As you zoom in, you can see the marks on my neck and on my chest. Um, this was also in August, um, another night out where he had punched me right in the eye. Um, I had a black eye for about four or five days. This one wasn't as bad. The two met on a dating app in Ontario and Plank says Evans told her everything she wanted to hear. By the third date, she says things turned nasty. But the couple moved to Newfoundland in the latter half of 2018. Now separated from her friends and family, things only got worse. The violence became more severe, the emotional abuse was stifling. He took me into the bathroom and smashed my head against the bathtub, ripped my hair out. 
The amount of times I would wake up and he'd have the knives, the knife set sitting beside the bed or choking me and just blacking out. And at that point, you just kind of start thinking maybe it's easier just to, for him to do it because it's better than living through this. New co-workers began to notice signs of abuse. Plank eventually confided in them, giving her the push to leave him for good. But it wasn't until a Facebook message around Christmas that year that helped Plank come forward to police. Donald messaged Plank and shared her story of being with Evans. Literally, word for word, we lived the exact same life. Donald went to Halton Regional Police, Plank to the RNC. They reported the abuse so it wouldn't happen to anyone else. Evans was now charged in two separate provinces for abusing two different women, but was out on bail and free to date whomever he wanted. Enter Ashley McVean. She knew Evans growing up, trusted him. See, when I first met Kevin, I never knew anything about these other girls. There was no talk about it. You know, it was like, you know, I have a jealous ex-girlfriend. The first time he choked her was on the evening of her birthday celebration. It only progressed from there. It was her routine. McVean says she knew she'd get beaten. She was prepared for it and she would fight back. My windpipe is like, like I'm broken. The scariest part of it for me was the choking. It was the strangulation. Uh, the last day he beat me, he said, I can snap your neck, I can take your life. He was choking me so hard. He was choking me from behind. He was choking me from front on. Like, And I couldn't even say the words, but I just said, do it. But one day the choking was too severe to ignore. Evans put a knee to her neck and she felt a pop. McVean told doctors she had a sore throat, but this evidence, red and purple broken blood vessels, were a dead giveaway to the doctor. And by August 2019, she made the decision to go to police. I had no choice. I had to stop him. On January 30th, 2020, Evans pleaded guilty to assaulting both Plank and McVean. A plea agreement had been reached. Some charges would be dropped in exchange for his admission of guilt a routine procedure in Canadian courts. He was given 253 days behind bars, but with credit for time served in jail after being arrested for assaulting McVean, he was released that very day. I was ready and willing to go to trial. I think I, even without my own testimony, I think the evidence would have spoke uh, in itself. I think a judge reading words, he's not getting the actual picture of what occurred and the trauma and the abuse that us as women suffered at the hands of Kevin. At his January sentencing hearing in St. John's for assaulting McVean and Plank, Evans, through his lawyer, expressed regret. Mr. Evans advises that he does feel very badly for what has happened and apologizes for his behavior. Meanwhile, Evans is set for trial in Ontario next June in relation to charges involving Jessica Donald. In an email to CBC News, his Ontario defense lawyer, Evan Chang, stressed that Evans is presumed innocent and is vigorously defending against the charges. Chang said it would not be appropriate during this pending case for myself nor my client to give any comment on your story. All three women say they lost themselves during their harrowing relationships, but have come out stronger because of it. As Donald prepares to face Evans at trial, she's come to realize things about herself and about her former partner. I think of him as a monster because human beings don't behave the way he did. Human beings don't do that. Ariana Kelland, CBC News, Burlington.
And as you heard, Jessica Donald's allegations against Kevin Evans have not been proven in court, and his trial in Ontario is scheduled to begin the second week of June in 2021. CBC News will follow this case to its conclusion as it makes its way through the courts. And you can read stories from across the country at cbc.ca slash stopping domestic violence. We've also listed resources on that website. If you need help and you're in immediate danger, of course, call 911. One, to find assistance in your area, visit sheltersafe.ca or endingviolencecanada.org.